everybody, Texas Trucker here, Lance's Performance Shop, alone with Sarah Mopars.com. It is Tuesday night, 7.03, and uh, got a lot of stuff here going on, and you're thinking like, hmm, this is odd. Got a battery-powered ratchet, we got the, got the Matco hammer, and we've got some swivel sockets. What's the deal? Well, this could turn into a tool hauler. It may very well just be one item. Probably going to be one item, seeing how we continuously tend to go on about things. But what we have, we'll just go ahead and throw it down on one of those honest channels. The title and the thumbnails are actually what the video is about. And uh, people say they always want that, and yet they continue to reward the people that do the opposite. Crazy how life works, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, if you're thinking like, hey, that's crazy that life worked out, that these were in stock for you. How did this happen? Well... I had the whole thing planned, all right? We had to go down, uh, visit a relative. It's a different Harbor Freight. Check stock. There's the 20% coupons, all right? Uh, you won't see this video for a long time, but this is like Halloween, the day after Halloween, basically. And so the weekend before Halloween, you know, like through the 30th, there's the 20% off on a whole bunch of different items, right? Uh, some 15, some 20, but Icon, Ratchet, uh, sock, they worded it really weird, but basically this stuff was 20% off. And I had the whole thing figured out, okay? After lunch, I was gonna go in and I was gonna purchase an item, and I was gonna have my sister purchase an item and pay her back. I was gonna have my mom grab something and pay her back, and I was gonna give my nephew cash for the least expensive item and have him grab it, and we could utilize all of the coupons that way, right? You know, I'm not somebody that lives like super close to a store, so you gotta, you know, take advantage of your opportunities, so. Um, it's a situation where I had some choices on these swivel sockets, and these are, of course, Icon's 3H drive. Uh, metric, shocking, I know, that we'd go metric here. Swivel sockets, and they're impact rated, and that's the big catch. Um, you think, hey, well, what, do you, what do you use at work? Uh, at work, uh, everything is either old and holding on, or anything that I've purchased in the last, man, 15 years has been super disappointing it sucks okay uh, i always preach about never using you know like chrome sockets on <laughs> uh, an impact or an air tool uh we do that at work uh it, with one size it's a snap-on 916 swivel it's old 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 the thing and just like i tell you the reason not to do it the sidewall is just fractured i mean there's one that's like literally i keep waiting for the thing to shatter and it hadn't done it the good news is it's used only with the ratchet, and I'm not justifying that, but it's a situation if I had the impact version, I don't care if it's Snap-on, Mac, Proto, Industrial, German, Japanese, whatever, it would not fit. It's simply never going to happen. It's the deal. The confines are so tight, if you come in and you've got the sidewall that impacts out, I don't care if it's thin, which I don't even think people make thin, you know, swivel impacts, it doesn't fit. There's a lot of swivel sockets in Chrome that you buy and they don't clear. It's just, it's insane tolerances and that's one of the few things that works. And there's like, there might be three of them. I know there's two and they're both pretty dicey. One of them, like I said, is, <clears throat> I don't know how it's held on. Uh, I'm not like some snap-on expert, so I don't know how to date them. Uh, but they're pretty old and it's just a situation where that's what fits and that's what works. Uh, that's also one of the few times we use 3 8 anything. That would be air. Everything at work is going to be pneumatic or air powered. We don't do any battery. Uh, there's so many shortcomings there and air, in my opinion, has been and will remain superior. Uh, regardless of what anyone else may say or think, that's a personal opinion of mine and I'll probably have that for many, many more years to come. Now, with that aside, um, here at the house, I don't have any impact swivels, and that's in part because every cheap impact swivel I've bought has been a complete junk fest. <laughs> okay, I don't care where it came from, it's been incredibly disappointing, so much so to the point, there's only so many places that make these things, and you get to a point where you're like, oh, that looks a lot like this one that I had, you know, a couple years ago. You don't even buy them, because you know they're going to fail, and they're going to be a waste of your time and money. And so the Icon ones are 
a little different and they were different enough that I was willing to take a chance on them and they're clearly modeled after snap on and you think yeah I got a new set of snap on they don't look anything like that. you're right because this is the old version just like when they kind of blatantly took Knipex plier wrench and made their version they didn't make the updated version you know it's protected they go back with the one that's a little older and the patents are expired and you can just kind of wing it and that's what they did here that's reverse engineering at its finest right um, a lot of people, uh, I know several, uh, if you talk to them about impact swivels, they actually prefer the older ones, so there's that as well. Uh, but the reason I brought all that up in the clearance and the tolerance is this design has an inherent downfall and it's going to be the sheer size of them, particularly in part because of the collar. Now you can take the collar away and it might not be as robust, kind of a catch-22 thing. And I've still been questioning if I've made the right decision or not. <laughs> and uh, the reason I say that is quite simply, I really wanted to come in and buy the half inch SAE. All right, at work, everything, you know, like it's all impact except for the ratchets. You know, there's like a right 716 on one side of the shop that's used a ton, and that's on a 3H drive ratchet. And then, uh, on the other side in an assembly area that's where we use that like chrome swivel because it's what clears right if anybody would make an impact they would clear we would switch but no one does so we go with what we've got um the reason i say what i said about the sae sizes that is a really complete set that they sell it's like seven sixteenths to inch and a quarter inch and a quarter is a big deal to me because we cover you know, I've got my 5 eighths and 3 eighths covered, you know, and that's about as big as I would probably go in a typical scenario, right? Anything bigger, we probably need to jump up to 3 quarter. But it also has, like, the small sizes. Basically, quarter hardware through 3 quarter hardware is covered, and that's going to cover the vast majority of what I do here, okay? So, uh, you're saying, hey, why didn't you get that? Well, it cost a little more. There's more pieces, it's bigger drive size, and I don't know, these might suck. Okay, that's the issue that I've got. So, kind of trying to ball on a budget, here was my logic. The half-inch drive metric set, I didn't really like the size range on, because if I'm remembering correctly, it started at a 12. And if you're thinking, like, why would you ever need a 10? You know, well... <laughs> <laughs> one to break it and sometimes there are situations where like I find that the quickest thing to do is to break the fastener and you know remove the part in that manner uh, particularly you know when you have like a pass-through component and then it's threaded on the base or whatever you know you can break the bolt and you're free it's almost like removing it but a different way of doing so <laughs> all right uh, it also you always factor in how easy or difficult it will be to drill and tap helicoil thread it out you know sometimes you get lucky and there's like thread on the backside and you can just spin it out from the underneath you factor all that in before you break a fastener intentionally, but sometimes it's nice. <laughs> so, uh, would I think you should do 10 millimeter on a half inch drive frequently? No. Um, but it's a situation where I do not have any chrome swivels, any standards, non-impact rated swivels that are metric. So, 10 to 19 covers the bread and butter metric stuff. There's no skips in this. You get the most frequently used size. Would I like to have had something smaller? Kind of, mainly for like plastic panels, like on the undersides of cars and body trim and stuff. You know, like they use sevens and eights all the time, it seems like. Uh, but, hey, you know, we can get by. Those are usually like little coarse threads, you know, not too, too time consuming to remove. But I'm kind of cheesing it. I'm kind of using this not only as, you know, impact rated swivels, but it's kind of going to be what the SK set is to me until at some point, somewhere along the line, we might get some standard chrome ones. So the other thing is I will primarily be using 3H drive with a ratchet. This one here, the long neck is in the bag that I always have with me that I take to work. So it's just battery powered. It's not going to generate torque that should destroy these or break them unless they're just complete junk. Will I ever put these on a 3H drive impact? Yeah, probably. But this will be the main uh, usage here at the house, and maybe even a hand, socket or hand ratchet, like I said, because again, these are my swivels. The thing is, is going to be the angle of articulation. A lot of times it's a situation where a wobble, you know, will get your standard socket in. Maybe you have to go different size range semi deep something like that but with the impact swivels we've kind of got it built in and it's just going to be an issue of 
confines in the space, the collar here. So um, coming in, that's, you know, long kind of rendition, but it's always important to me. And when I see videos and people don't explain why they bought something, you're left like, well, why did you get it? Like, what is it for? What application? You know, might make you think, yeah, that's a great idea. I should get those. Or uh, is this person even going to use these? And I'll be straight up honest and up front. I would use the snot out of the half inch set versus these. But this is sort of like my gateway test point, okay? The Icon Impacts that we have have held up fine. I like that they're chrome molly. That's a big deal to me. But when you jump into swivels, I'm very apprehensive about anything because I've had such terrible experiences in the past. The Pittsburghs, you're like, oh, just get the Pittsburghs, you know, they've been great. I grenaded so many of those things at work, I don't even buy them anymore. Like, I mean, it's it's that bad. You know, they work, they're nice for a little while, and then they just suck. I've got one set that I've never issued. They probably date back to, like, man, early 2000s. Uh, they have, like, gold, because I had to use one the other day, actually, by hand, uh, just to get into a tight area. But uh, I've never issued them because I'm like, oh, those things are just going to break. <laughs> So, and it's a deal like they're really, they're so bad, they're not, maybe they've gotten better, you know, that was a while back, but they don't look like they have. And so these actually look like a design upgrade, you know, instead of just maintaining the status quo. Uh, so like I said, these could suck, but they're going to fill two purposes. They're impact rated for my 3 8 metric stuff. I'm also planning to use them. I know they're far from ideal, but when you don't have anything and you can two for one it, I tend to err on the side of impact, right? If I was starting from scratch, I'm like, I need sockets. What sockets do I get? I'm going to buy impact sockets. And until I get in a situation where the sidewalls are too fat to fit somewhere, I'm home free because I can use those by hand if I want to, and I can use them with a power tool, be that battery powered or pneumatic. So these are kind of going to be the test. Uh, it's not something that I will use as frequently as SAE. Same thing with the 3 8 drive set from, you know, SAE perspective. I'd use that way more. But this was a deal where this was a little lower of a price point, and then with a 20% off, I thought, yeah, let's let's do it and see what we think. So you know the drill, I've got to spend a ton of time. I've got to say, okay, like, I know some people leave these trays in here even though they're backwards and no one, you know, that I know reads numbers left to right, you know, that are, you know, 19 to 10, it's 10 to 19, it's A to Z, not Z to A. Uh, this is a is situation and an issue I find with a lot of products, and that's why some of them I personally don't like. Some of you are going to be like, oh, 19 to 10 is way better, I want the big size here, and it's all personal preference, but for me, this is just terrible. I can't stand it. I don't want anything to do with it, and it's going to be rectified by a standalone third-party tool organizer. Uh, so, the thing I'm going to get at, though, I realize this case is nice. Now, part of it, I honestly think, is just for display purposes, for the shelf and security. That's a little difficult. It's going to take you a lot of time to steal one of these, right? Uh, hopefully, you get caught, or somebody points it out, or something. Uh, so that's good. It's theft purposes. It's packaging and presentation purposes. I totally get that. But man, I think the price could be way better if they would just, even if it was just this outer shell, which I don't know of anybody, I guess if you were like, put these in a toolbox drawer and then you like use this black plastic part as like your caddy to carry them around everywhere by literally like a serving tray. I could see that uh, this the gray tray I totally get and then there's again that lid which kind of seems stupid but again if you work somewhere dusty out in the field if it's a body shop there's all kinds of reasons you might want to keep that and granted eventually it's gonna crack and break and not be there but initially you have it but there just has to be a better way to do this to where you can lower the price point for consumers like this is nice this is a really good presentation I can see the benefits I understand why they might want to do it but looking out for you and me, it's like, I'd rather not have that and pay like $10 less. You know, that's like if I could get all the prices down, you know, like that much, it'd be a win for me. And I wouldn't miss this that much, you know. Uh, and it would be sort of a deal just like me having to come in and switch the organization methods. It's like, well, you know, if this guy wants to put this crud in a tray, he can go buy one. But I don't know. You can give me your thoughts on that. I know some of you will do, just like I said, like, oh yeah, it's great, I carry it around all the time, it's great, what are you talking about? Others of you will be like, man, I love those little, you know, trays that have the numbers on them, they're super awesome, then I don't have to buy anything, and I can live with it. Some of you, like I said, will like 19 going down to 10. 
But for me personally, it's just kind of a... It takes up so much space in the black. And then that takes up a lot of space too. And it's not oriented in the way I would want it to be. So... That's just kind of a kind of a buzzkill there, but anywho, we'll get that all dismantled, and really the only thing we have to analyze here on the front is this, which again we'll just simply kind of recap what we've already said. So, part number twelve, um, ten. That's the impact swivel socket set, ten piece set. Again, no skip sizing. That's one of the things they pride themselves with with Icon. What do I pride myself with? Chrome Molly. Again, I don't care. You know, there's tons and tons of different ways to do vanadium, and I'm sure some of them are fine, and people can throw advertising and engineering dollars at it, but that's not how I was raised, that's not how I was brought up, and I don't change. So I, I stick with what I know and what I've experienced, and that's that I want chrome molly on an impact. So that works great for me in that front. High visibility stamped size markings for easy identification. Now if you're thinking like, hey, I don't see anything there, well read it carefully stamped size markings. I prefer stamped, okay? I really do. It doesn't go away like laser or paint or anything like that, silk screen printing, whatever they might do. Stamped stuff stays there. The issue is the icons, in my opinion, should really have stamped and laser etching. Like if you go and we grabbed one of my capris, you would see like they would have this oriented in the tray for packaging. You'd see like a big 13 millimeter right there, right? And then if you rotate it, you'd see 13 millimeter stamped as well. I get it would come off. I get that the stamping's superior, but I think I would prefer to have that at least initially. Yes, I can come in with a paint pen. Yes, I can color code it. Whatever I want to do, you can do that. Everyone can do it. But from an initial purchase perspective, I would love to see laser etching with the stamp. If I had to pick only one, I'm going to take it like this. But at this price point, trying to be the, you know, like tool truck equivalent or, you know, pro's choice or just as good even, you got to do better than like mid-tier offerings. And they're all doing laser. A lot of the stupid cheap stuff that sucks does laser etching and stamping. So in my opinion, that's definitely something they need to do. Uh, chamfered socket openings for easy engagement. Again, that's going to be a situation where both sides, drive and fastener, are going to have a slight chamfer to them. Personally, that's a big deal to me. Again, you can debate it. No, does it last longer on the anvil or not? I want to be able to get it on the anvil. <laughs> so that's totally fine by me. Uh, and then precision forged for maximum grip and torque. Again, these are going to Man, I don't know what, how long you were looking at that blur fest, but uh, my apologies there. We'll just, it's a sign we don't need to read it, right? So, uh, any socket that you buy now pretty much has whatever technology you want to call, just where you're grabbing by the flats instead of the corner. Impact, chrome, cheap, expensive, pretty much everything's to that. Uh, and then premium storage tray, and I really will. Like, I, a lot of people are like, that's not premium, you know, this is junk. It really is for the storage, like factoring and everything. I mean, some guy might want like the, you know, like those dudes that wear the like 18 pound otter box for their, you know, seven year old iPhone. This appeals to some people. And I really will say like, if you were the case and the protect and the carry easily person like this does have appeal there. But for a lot of people, it's just like wasted and they're not going to use any of it. And <laughs> it's a shame you have to pay for it. So. Uh, that said, I'm going to can it, I'm going to get this thing open, and we're going to actually get to what is uh, probably the most important part, which is examining the sockets. But again, that's my logic and my justification for picking them up, and I can tell you right now, is there a better 3 8 impact swivel socket? I'm sure that there is, but you're dealing with a guy right here that I'm not going to use these enough to justify the <laughs> premium top of the line, okay? Um, if this was standard chrome, I use that way more, even with metric, you know, and this is just, it's not my bread and butter. I, I'm still in the fifties through the seventies and the metric system hadn't invaded my stuff. 
you know so it, it's not that big of a deal to me but let's get it open take a look at them see what we think all right enjoy the rare look above the workbench there's some of the cool stuff hanging on the wall but, uh, this is kind of what i'm talking about when you take these two number one phillips screws out you can release this you know which, i mean some people might hang that on the wall put it on a toolbox cut this use it art whatever you know burn it down i don't know then you're left with a pretty nice little tray like i mean you take the lid off which the lid is like super thick like this isn't cheap stuff this is you know good thick plastic but right here this is not a bad little tray obviously the sockets will drop down in there but i mean like check this out you got a matco ratchet that's the locking flex head and you can't articulate the locking thing and you're like i'm just gonna throw this over here and soak it in bowel still for two years and see if it functions there you go you could literally do that you could put rust remover in here and throw some fasteners you know see if they clean up nice <laughs> you could put extensions uh screw i mean weapon of choice if you're curious was this number one VI, right? Why? Because it was the closest one to me. But you can store screwdrivers in it, extensions, long hex bits. This would be like really like, don't throw these away because you can always use something like this. It's just, it takes up an obscene amount of space if you're like stocking a socket drawer, you know? Uh, this thing right here, again, it is really robust. Obviously, you could load this down. Let's say that you've got like a ratchet and some long hex bits. I mean, you could put this thing on there and you can use it as a case. The way this would work, there's tabs down here and they're going to tuck in right here. You don't even have to put the screws back on. Like this is now flush, right? And we can just lug this thing around, do whatever we want to. So I do think it's nice and there's tons of stuff you can do with it. It's just, I'd rather have this case or this tray available in harbor freight for $9.99 or $5.99 or something as opposed to having to pay for it with sockets you know what i mean uh let me know again your thoughts on that if you'd rather if you want that really bad and you're going to use and sacrifice all that space in your toolbox or cart or if it's a situation where you're like man you know that's that's uh kind of a waste right there isn't it he's right so what i wouldn't mind seeing in the store is this now i know i know from like a retail perspective you know how do you mount this how do you hang it i've often thought with the icon stuff number one you should be able to get standalone items that should be in store if they have to be locked up in the back just one in a you know glass display cabinet something uh have these lay flat for frick's sake put them in a box you know, the cardboard, you'd think, would have to be cheaper than that plastic tray. Uh, which, does that turn some people off that want, like, the tool truck experience? I don't know. Uh, I've bought some pretty expensive things that have come in, like, junk packaging. Typically, you know, you would want that. But, I mean, if you know what you're getting and you're familiar with it, you're like, I don't really care what it comes in. But capri for example you would have a tray similar to this and it would just be sleeved in a box now there's no brick and mortar capri stores right to run into like harbor freight has so maybe they get away with it but i mean you could have this just on a shelf stacked vertically you know come in on your display section instead of having that thing hang like it's oriented with this deal you know off of your peg you could just have you know tiered shelves you know and you'd have three h drive metric swivels and stack 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 and go four high and three back and have 12 on this you know fully stocked display just ideas to maybe save some money um again i'm very interested if people agree with that or if you're like no 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 those cases are fantastic and i love them hanging vertically sideways not like the presentation like this right here okay would be the best presentation where you can actually see the numbers through this plastic and that thick plastic right and you can be like oh it's a 17 you can tell like what they say kind of right in the store that thing's hanging vertically and it's not like the numbers align with it so it's sort of just a I don't know, it's, it's minor, but it's like something that I think could be improved and save us money, basically. So, this is your ultimate stopping point, though, right here. For the vast majority of people, you know, they're going to get rid of that tray. They're probably not going to keep the plastic thing to keep dust or debris off of the sockets. But they're going to have this and the cardboard that's underneath it. Which you can kind of see there. We're getting real dicey on the point that gravity takes over and makes a mess. But this, again, is a good chunk of space. It's not terrible. I mean, like, you could put it on the most efficient and compact, you know, rail. And, yeah, you can kind of squeeze them in a little bit. 
but you're not going to do terribly better. This is about 16 inches, we'll call it. And then the thing is, though, like when they lay flat, you're giving up four inches. So this is 16 by four rectangular shaped, right? If you stand these upright on a rail, okay, like there's the four inch mark and we're giving up like an inch. So you start to see where I'm coming from. Instead of having this, you could have this guy here, okay? And then you've got your next socket on a rail here or a peg or whatever you're doing. I mean, you could even put this big of a gap and you still doubled your space. You'd have your 10 sockets here and 10 there. So when you've got 20 versus 10 and you think, man, you could like scoot that in, you know, and you could have like 30 there. And that's where the argument comes in. So if all you do is metric and you maybe say have a drawer dedicated to chromes and a door drawer dedicated to impacts, maybe this fits and it fits amply. Uh, maybe it's a deal where you don't have any 3-8 stuff. You just have half. And so you've got your shallow deep and your swivels. Everybody is different. What you work on, what you do, what you do at work, all those things factor in. But like just thinking of like the broad picture, there's a lot of people where even though this is cool and it's I'm I love that it's included, you know, the tray and the organization aspect, maybe more than like the packaging tray. It's like it's just not ideal for people. So maybe if this could be sold separately, or if you buy the set, you can get the tray like stupid cheap type of a thing. I don't know. There's a lot of different options, but uh, we've kind of talked more there about the whole packaging and procedure of them than the sockets. So we'll try to crank this out now, the part that people probably care about. But again, if you watch my channel, you should know to expect these things. And I just have to assume that you're of the same mindset as me. So right there again, really nice broaching. You can see if you see gold down in there, we didn't win Powerball, that's the spring. Okay, so you got some spring steel, which again, right here, you can kind of get a feel for that. The issue that you've got, like it's the pin design and then it's got the collar to keep it in place. This actually articulates a little bit better than I was thinking it would. I wasn't expecting a ton from these, but like, think about things that are difficult for you to access and then picture this. And you can kind of see, and of course, being a swivel socket, you've got full 360 degree rotation. Is it super, super buttery smooth in the middle? No. <laughs> you kind of hear it grinding? Yeah. But again, I've had really, really expensive sockets that are kind of the same way. So in terms of the sidewall, this is another big deal. This is somewhere where I think it might be prudent for manufacturers to consider a slightly thinner. I'm not talking like breathtakingly thin but just maybe not as fat because you got to realize this is the tin that's a pretty beefy little socket there uh, and it's very small if this looks tiny well it's really not it's it's your standard 10 millimeter size and it's even an impact but then you've got this monster on the back end so if you've got a situation where you've got like an obstruction here you know like you're totally flush here and you've got like some bracket coming down and you've got to release it to pull a component this is awesome this is great you don't have any issues here but now if you've got something you know mounted and it's kind of like say cylindrical coming up you know like when i take motors off pallets or something this can come in but all of a sudden as you like narrow down like you got all this space you know right it's like a curve and you've got all this space over here but then as you come down towards this fastener <laughs> right your standard socket won't come in so you're like oh, i'll get the swivel and maybe it gets this one but then on the next one maybe the guy ran the lag screw in super deep and now you're hitting on the collar and that's really the big downfall of this design is just the sheer size of them like you basically this part's fine the swivel's actually really good uh i think it's pretty representative of what you would see and what you can expect right uh, think of like maybe flex plate bolts, you know, if you're doing stuff on a transmission or firewall area, like it's kind of not bad initial inspection, but then you have this. <laughs> so that's the part that concerns me. And uh, like I said, that's why we didn't buy, well, number one, you know, have family ditch me, but uh, it's a situation where I want to just try with just one set. And I decided I give this a go again in part because it's a two for one. So everything else were kind of covered, but you know, like this would be the true two for one. So I thought, man, I think I'm going to do that, even though it's kind of questionable. 
But uh, this is a small one. This is the 10 because again, this is backwards of how I would do things. So that means the 19, or for us SAE people, the three quarter is over here. Now they've got knurling on there. I don't know why I have gloves on both hands. My apologies for regular viewers. It's much better. <laughs> so I, I was thinking that was going to be like the cheap knurling that you just see, but you can't feel it. You can actually feel that. So that's kind of nice. Again, Right after she squeaks, I think we'll be able to emulate it again, and we can't, but you get the idea. I mean, it is not super smooth, but it is rotating. It does swivel pretty good. It's just you've got the collar, and that's kind of a detriment. So in terms of what is going on here, all right, let's, let's take a gander. We're going to try to focus on this. You've got up top some cautionary text that's going to say... <laughs> Very difficult for me to see this. Uh, warning, wear safety goggles. And then what do we say? Do not hold socket with, I'm assuming it's going to say <laughs> hand. Uh, oh, Lord, I thought that meant, okay. Do not hold socket while in use. Okay, that could have been shortened quite a bit. But that use right there, I thought that was USA for a second. That's why I like, I'm like, what? This was Taiwan, right? So my apologies. I was like, yeah, did we get like some little freak thing thrown in the set or something? Uh, that's about it right there on that side. You do have the pin access here if you're using those. Again, you can see the chamfered opening on the drive size. Coming around to the socket side, where we would be grabbing our fastener, this is a little thinner than the tin. Again, it's going to vary on stock sizes. That's typically how these, you know, sockets pan out. But it's got good broaching there. It's got shallow. A lot of people hate when their sockets are you know, like too deep and they're like, oh, my nuts stuck. You know, I kind of get a piece of all thread out. Uh, so that's advantageous for most of you. And then right there, that design again, we're going to grab not here, but right there on the flat. Man, I chipped that nail. I don't even know how I did it. I saw that kind of pop up in the camera. So uh, right here, you can see, again, the thick part, though, is that collar now. And the 19's credit, it's not going to be that big of a deal. This is either going to fit or it's not. Because, again, this is basically taking up as much space as that collar. Now, if we drop down to, say, the 14, which I use quite a bit, looking down the barrel, you can see you kind of got like a telescoping effect, right? You've got the socket, and then boom, there is your, this is perfectly centered, there's your collar. So at some point in this set, you're going to have the 15 is still smaller. 16, I think it's getting closer. 17, which we'll use this one a little bit. I would say the 17 is about at that point. I feel like the collar is still bigger, but it's almost to the point that it's negligibly bigger, right? Like you can look down this, and unless I have the camera just right, you don't see that this is slightly taller. So we're like, we've narrowed this down to just a couple thousands. So 17 to 19, if this fits, it fits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. 16 and under. You can have a deal where maybe, you know, you can snake in this by and you're on your way to the fastener and then boom, the collar hits. So that's where it would be the issue again, kind of to give you a good comparison of what I'm trying to discuss here. The 10 is super small and you see that huge collar down there. The 19, it's not an issue because it's slightly bigger or the same size as the collar. So that is again truly you got to think like looking down this barrel where you start to see this rise up this is what we've added okay this pressed on collar right there if you take that off you just got the sidewall of the socket and that's again going to be like a standard 3 8 10 millimeter socket it would just neck down up here this kind of does the same thing it just has the collar <laughs> that collar is where we run into the issue where we might be obstructed but I gotta say, I mean, these, I'm not thinking these are the greatest things that have ever been in my hand in terms of a swivel socket, but they're actually better than I thought they would be. Initial inspection, right? Bench test. I'm not going to be able to tell you, yes, I fully endorse these for a long time. Okay, we have to use them and we have to use them a lot. And I can't do that here on the bench. I could run it and I could turn a couple of bolts and be like, wow, look at that. They didn't break. I'm assuming they're not going to do that. Okay, like we're just going to take that for granted, if you will. 
but I need to use these a long time. Like, do they last a year? Do they last two years? How often did I use these in the two years, you know? So some guy that, you know, mainly does metric stuff could buy the half inch equivalent of this and he might like have two jobs that he used them on. He's like, yeah, those are great. Well, put it in context for us, buddy. So that's what I try to do. That's why, again, it's initial inspection for the price point. I'm not not disappointed. You know, I can't say that I'm thrilled. I'm not the happiest man on the planet right now. But I think we got a got a pretty good deal on them, and I'm excited to see. Interestingly enough, I figured these things would be just swashed with oil, and they're not. They're they've all been relatively dry. So some of you will like that, some of you will hate it. Uh, let's come back to the 14 because again, I do use that a lot. That's when like Chrysler was transitioning over, and you know, 14 and 9 16 so 3 8 and whatever the metric equivalent would be. Yeah, uh, I have to deal with 14 a lot. Sometimes, honestly, too, you can interchange them, and sometimes you're surprised, like, man, this is, I know this is SAE, but the metric fits better. Rust, wear and tear, all sorts of things contribute. Back to this, though, on this drive size, and I hate this because, to me, just like this is backwards, the 19 to 10 on the tray, this is also backwards. This is upside down, in fact. So you've got Icon, which looks really good, stamped nicely, 14. That part number is a little close to the 14 in my opinion. I'd kind of rather have it on the back side. I'm not going to lie, that 12UM14, like it could go here, or we could have the 14 stamped again, or we could have laser etching. I think something else, this area with the collar is probably not going to see a lot of wear. Stamping there or the laser etching would be nice. You know, like you could have, if this was done my way, okay, we'd have 14 stamps and then actually i'd probably i know it would come off quicker but i would sort of prefer to have the laser etching on the socket and then down here have the stamping but either way you kind of get what i'm saying this is how i would have them oriented vertically in my toolbox or cart that's why i wish that the font and the numbers and the stamping is all lined up with that some of you again will be totally different and you actually prefer them this way but you're not going to drop this down on some peg organizer this is either going to be in a tray, loose in a drawer, or maybe like loose in a case, like our little black plastic piece up there, or on a rail. So let's come in and grab the old Hercules here, and uh, let's line up the ball detent just to be safe. So this is a 14 millimeter, and uh, we're going to give her a spin here, see what she looks like. Going very slowly, intentionally, we're going to ramp up. Said not to hold your hand there, so we're going to do it. But right here on the ratchet again, this one, uh, the one at work I use all the time. Uh, this one's seen quite a bit of use. You can't tell as much, but you know, the paint starts to come off, no big deal. So right here, we're gonna again take a look at it. A little bit more speed, let me try to line her out a bit. And right now, we're just gonna go progressive throttle and get up to full speed. We'll articulate the head so you can see side profile dead on and then rotate away from there. So now let's see if it maintains an angle. These are brand new. Okay, this gets floppier over time, but right now let's say we were coming in and I had my hand here. I can't go any farther because of a valve cover or header or something. And we got our fastener right there on the side of the block. Let's see if it's going to maintain. We're going to try to stop it where it would be in this position. So let's see. Slowly rolling it. She's doing just that. Again, pay attention to the socket side. With enough inertia, you saw it start to spin back. Obviously, if it had the fastener to grasp onto, it would hold it, but it does kind of self-center, which that's not a bad thing. That makes me feel a little bit better about the insides and the machining and the tolerances. So, uh, is she any looser after going for a ride? A little bit, nothing, nothing crazy, but um, yeah, that's kind of how she looks, so. Not sure what else we can do again. Um, I usually tell you, you know, like, hey, you check out the automotive stuff and you'll see these in use. That's where you'll see these in use. Uh, if I get like some stupid project or, you know, build or something that's got metric hardware, I'll make a point to use them. Even if I don't need the swivels, I'll use them. 
and we'll kind of see how they hold up. But uh, last thing I guess we'll do here, we'll take the old SK, three quarter on this one, so three H drive, but by the way, three quarter socket. We're gonna compare it to the 19 to give you an idea. Vastly different design considerations, all right? So if we come in here and kind of zoom in on them and focus, you can see they're like pretty much like equal overall length. It's gonna be pretty much spot on. The SKs again kind of do what I like, you know, being from America and reading left to right, you know, this is, this is what I prefer. You can see the three quarter is there, and that means when the drive size is placed somewhere like on the rail they come with, that's what you see. It's upright. Okay, this is the opposite of that. This is gonna be 19 face down. <laughs> You know, to me, that's like 61, 67, 62. We know we don't have those sizes of sockets, but I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate here. I just, I prefer the SK design, right? Stamping, it's going to be that way with anything. Stavila, Hazette, you name it, throw down your impacts, and I'm going to say I like this better. <laughs> so, uh, coming back to this side, the fat points on our three-quarter SK is the three-quarter itself, right? It's noticeably bigger than our coupling and it's noticeably bigger than our drive size. The way this one works, if this looks like square stock to you, sort of like a you know small adapter or extension or something, it's basically what it is. It's drilled, it's got a pin you know placed through it right here. And then opposite of that, so you can do like full articulation, you've got a pin in the top side, right? So your rotation from this axis comes from the bottom, your rotation side to side comes from the top pin. This has a pin, but you don't see the pin because you have the collar hiding the pin because it's designed and intended to be used with impact, so that's kind of how they're going to attempt to retain it. Will this pop off? Will this slide off? Will it, you know, get jostled? Will I drop this? Will I bang it against a frame rail or something? And it just shatters? We have to wait to see. <laughs> that's, that's the unfortunate part of these types of reviews. Coming in right there. This is sort of the body. Think of this as like a ball and socket joint, right? You know, grandma's hip or something, you know, like you've got your leg and you've got your hip and it's a ball and socket. And so that's sort of the concept we have here, albeit with a pin driven through. So I'd like to have one to dissect, but I'm not going to tear these apart because I'm, I'm not made of money. So uh, if one does come apart, we'll take a look at it then. <laughs> so yeah, I got to say like, for the price that we got these with the 20 it's not like they were a ripoff before the coupon but with the coupon i feel way better about it initial inspection here again i'm kind of kicking myself for not just pulling the trigger on the big half inch set but i thought oh, let me kind of feel it out here and like i said since i don't have any 3h drive swivel sockets in chrome this gives me not near as good, not near as articulated of a set as these SKs or standard chromes across most brands, right? But I do get swivels that I can use by hand or on the battery powered stuff or on pneumatic stuff. And since I didn't have any metric swivels in the 3.8 line, it's kind of a win-win there. So I've sort of doubled my chances of this not sucking or being a total waste of time and money. And that to me is a small win and I'll take it. So. What I want to know from you, I'm sure there are some of you that have pulled the trigger on these. Not recently, but probably long ago. And you probably had these, some of you maybe for what? Two years now, possibly? So what I want to know, what's the most beneficial to people watching this video, is how have these held up for you? If you're using these, be honest, it's fine. You know, if you're like me and maybe you build 55 Chevys all day, right? And you just happen to have these and you use them once in a blue moon or when you're slow and you take on other jobs or something or uh, you put LS's in some of the builds you do or something. That's why you got them. If you use these like, you know, four days a month or something, you know, be honest. If you're using them daily, all day, every day, tell people. And that's how you get the best feedback and you can kind of assess how these hold up. Anything like this, anything that is a swivel, anything that is impact is going to wear and it is going to, in the case of a swivel, break. It's not a question of if, it's a simply a question of when. And then between your cheap stuff, your intermediate stuff, and your really expensive stuff, you have to weigh the price versus the life. 
And sadly, the best way to determine the life cycle is first-hand experience. And when you're coming into a new product, you can't really do that. These really haven't been out long enough to form like a solid opinion. Again, like the guy that says they're complete garbage, you might have like had them reduced down from some three-quarter pneumatic and shattered them all. You know, it might be the guy that says they're great, so used them twice, and he's only used like the 13 and the 10, you know. You never know how honest people are being. That's why I'm straight up honest and upfront with you. I don't do metric as much. Uh, SAE is still, I don't care what everyone else does, that's still what I do vast, vast majority of the time. So I will use these again. Like I said, I will make a point. There's been many times I will not need a swivel impact socket. Since these are new and I'm curious, I'll make a point to use them. And we'll kind of try to get some feedback that way. But your thoughts and opinions are appreciated on the sockets. Uh, if you don't have the 3.8 metric drive, maybe you have the half inch metric or the half inch SAE. Across the board, these should be even, so let us know your thoughts and experiences there. Similarly, I'm really curious, do you use the trays included, or do you even take it a step further and put them here? Now, I will say, this case would be nice. Like, you could carry this across your shop, okay? Eventually, the cardboard, the adhesive comes off, and it falls, and it's a mess, and then this thing's weak, and it cracks, stress fractures, whatever. Any plastic tray is going to do that. But that is really thick. It's like a nice, thick ABS. It's almost like a Tupperware style thing, right? So if you use that, I could see it honestly, like if you're taking it from your toolbox across to an assembly area or the job site or something, or maybe you keep everything at home, you're mobile, and you're like, okay, I gotta go out and do this generator. I'm gonna need my quarter stuff, or I'm gonna need the 3 8 impacts or whatever. Then I could see that black tray coming in handy, but man, I would love to just pay less for this and have an option to buy something like that as an add-on. Let me know your thoughts on that. I want to kind of see where people fall on the spectrum there. But with that said, I'm going to end this. Sadly, it's pretty late. Got off work late. I've still got to eat, so I might have to go do that. But uh, let me know your thoughts on all this stuff. Again, not the most exciting video, but that's kind of, that's kind of what we do here. We have to say why we got it what we were you know, thinking about getting, all the pros and the cons, kind of how we ultimately decided to shell the cash out. And uh, like I said, just patiently, if you can, hold out for a sale and then cash in on that. And hopefully, you can, if you want multiple items, you can go back to back. This is the gateway. Next time that 20% comes up, whether it's 20% off everything or Icon or ratchets and sockets only, whatever, I got my eyes on the half inch drive set, SAE. So. With that said, uh, let me know your thoughts. Hope you enjoyed the video. More importantly, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, you'll be seeing these in the not-too-distant future as we populate them somewhere in the U.S. General Master Tech. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check back. If you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do so. Once more, thanks for watching, and have a fantastic weekend.